Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Motivational Monday, and we are back with you with a word, and James is excited about this word, so mm -hmm. I know that um, he's coming strong for us, for us this morning. Well, the Lord is coming strong, and I'm going to let him say something. And then we got Donald. Hey, Donald. Good morning, Donald. And Jasmine. Jasmine. Hey, it's just an Angie. Mm -hmm. James was looking for your number, Angie, so he can give y'all a call. Um, who we got? Sister Marsha. Oh, hey, Sister Marsha. And, um, hey, Mr. Brother Sister, Rouse. Sister What's Rose. up, Bella Yellow? Everybody coming on good in. Good morning. Just good. Glad to have you here again on this Motivational Monday as we get ready to uh, move forward in the Lord. Once again, just glad to be here. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Let me say that again. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. You have to claim victory on the day. Soon as you wake up, soon as your eyes open, soon as you take that first breath, you got to claim your victory. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I shall rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, God is good today, yesterday, and forevermore. He's right with us. He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And right through here, sometimes you have to just encourage yourself right in the midst of everything that's going on. And you can't look for it sometimes from the left or to the right. You just got to start claiming victory within your own self. Ah, uh, That's right. I was trying to take time out to share. So sorry I wasn't looking at the camera. I was uh, trying to share this message. And if you would, go ahead and take time out to share, 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 share. And um, we appreciate you all on this morning. This morning, let me tell y'all something. I am, I'm feeling some kind of way about this title, this message, period. And James asked me about what, he's like, what are we talking about? And I'm like, I have to pray and ask God to give me a word. Give me, even if it's one single word or whatever it is, show me something. And the only thing I could see was um battlegrounds, battlegrounds or war grounds, battlegrounds. and but i didn't know exactly where to go with this so y'all pray for us on this morning yeah. pray for me yeah, keep us both he feel it i don't i don't i really i'm gonna be honest with you i don't but it's just something about when we get on and we start to connect with um uh, um all the people that are connecting and, and see y'all coming in and it's encouraging um right. and, it, and it makes it, we just settle in we settle in one thing about it we just gonna be ourselves and Trust God in right. the midst of everything that's going on. Um, got up this morning early to try to. Um, well, we got up early try to this morning. Put this together, listen to prayer, and said, you know, because last night we were trying, and it's a war. It's a war. Because one thing we take uh, seriously, and that's ministry. We just don't like to put stuff together. We really like to make sure we're helping someone along the way. Um, and make sure it's coming straight from God, and yeah. it's a right now word from God. I don't want to just get up here and just be spewing off at the mouth and giving you guys something that's from me, but I want to make sure I'm giving coming straight to you all from God, and I'm I'm used as His voice, His mouthpiece. So. And Sister Tasha would say, "Did y'all do a test run around 7:30? We, that was that, that was a an test accident. run. That was Tamika trying to clean the I was screen. trying to clean the screen. And she Sorry. came on, so you know, hey, we just we was prompting y'all to get ready." <clears throat> get ready for uh this word on this morning like I say once again just thankful again uh we we thank for everybody that's tuning in to the acts ministry sister johnny sister Sanisha, sister olivia we got so many people sister sabrina we want right. to thank everybody that's actually even working hard behind the scenes sister angela sister camille everybody's coming in don't want to miss sister phyllis mcdonald don't want to miss anybody uh sister tiffany uh just but we miss everybody i, I don't know how much i can uh, can really keep saying that we miss everybody and we um, appreciate you and guys we appreciate you um uh just encouraging words and just pushing forward let me tell you something this ain't easy it's, it's not, not easy it's it's a fight um and 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 one thing i want to thank you and my past and first lady for just allowing us the opportunity to um to be ourselves um and th and that's a that's a struggle within our right. own you know because one thing ooh, about me, to, to make our life is open book, and we try not to expose too much of it. But we we want everybody to realize that you're not alone. You're not alone. We've been dealing with this this year 2020, and it has not been an easy year. It's been it's been a it's been a 
a fight and your sister Angela Angie Riggins glad to have you on. But it's it's been a fight, you know, because none of us plan for this year to be the way it is. We didn't plan for this year to be the way it was. It is. We didn't plan for 2019 to be the way it was, mm -hmm. 2018 the way it was. We don't have any control of how our lives are, um, how life is going to pan out, but right. we do have control over how we, um, how we handle it, how we handle the, the things choices, that we go through, the choices we make, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's the thing. I, I, I'll be honest with you. And we're going to get into the word God. I think we got to, I think we got to write now word, especially based off even yesterday and, and last week when pastor and first lady, I, I want y'all to hear it was a shift being taking place. A shift was taking place. When they start talking about faith over fear, there's a shift taking place. So sometimes you got to look at, I got to start putting more emphasis on my faith than my fears. I'm going to say that again. You got to start putting more emphasis on your faith than your fears. We have identified so many areas of our fear. But now we got to say, am I going to stay here? I'm going to be stuck here. Or am I going to start operating in faith? Faith is the substance things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And sometimes it's kind of, uh, uh, it, it can be kind of fearful walking in faith but the thing about it is the greater the fear sometimes the greater the faith i'm gonna say it again the greater the fears most of the time the greater the faith i gotta walk in it i gotta be able to overcome my fears by my faith so we're gonna get ready to get into this but last year you know last year uh was rough for us i think it was probably one of the most roughest years of our of our life uh and see uh, i can't talk about that because see james he always he's the crier on mm -hmm. here so, but last year would make me cry. Yeah, so last year, and like it was it was it was the end of last year. So, we had so many expectations, and even going into this year, of what we were going to do, and then the pandemic hit. Right. You know, the pandemic hit. You know, and 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 it kind of just shut down everything. But let me let me um, confess. I told myself last year. I said, you know what? I'm going to take 2020, and I'm going to recover. Yeah. From some things and I must admit God is doing something in me he's um, even in the midst of all of this there's some recovery there's a recovery that's going on I've been in the, in the recovery room right there's a transformation that's been going on within me and I and I'm allowing it to happen it might be a slow process but I'm allowing it to happen you know and I know I know he wished I would go ahead and just get over some now, things now, and that's but the thing. that's the thing let me let me let me keep it up i'm i'm that's one thing we have to do you have to be patient in recovery right especially when you're dealing with other other folks and 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 you were some of the cause of some of the 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 reason they had to have surgery the reason they had to go through the process you have to be patient in that recovery and sometimes you you want folk to get healed quick you want folk to get over stuff quick matter of fact you want to get over some stuff quick but it doesn't always happen that way so like she said, she has been working on getting to that place. And not all of it has been, been me. Let me let me say, let me make it clear. Not all of it has been me. But if right. we're if, if we're it's in life a, period. If we're in a relationship, it's things that we do so, some some stuff consciously and subconsciously that, that we, we hurt others. Right. You know what I'm saying? So come on. I was just saying, you know, and I was actually going there with what he was saying, and when you're in the the recovery room, you know, there's things that the doctors want you want to make sure that you do, especially if there are certain areas of the body that you have been operated on. So, you know, they want to make sure that you're breathing correctly. They right. want to make sure you go to the restroom. They want to make sure, you know, that everything is functioning properly before they let you out of the recovery room. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm confessing on today. I'm in the, I'm in the recovery room trying to recover and God is, um, God is ever so patient. And I, and I just thank God on this morning for being a patient God, for being patient with me, because I know that I am a work in progress and just like many of us. And I thank God for him being patient, being patient. for his patience on this morning. And, but, and, and that, and that kind of leads us right into, to what we want to talk about today. Like I say, she says, and I, and I, and I, let me confess, I'm in a recovery room in some areas in my life too. I've already had the surgery. The healing process has begun. Now it's in my hands to do what I need to do. I got to follow the doctor's orders. I got to follow the doctor's orders in order to get completely healed. Because nobody wants to be stuck mm -mm. in the recovery room. Let me say it again. Nobody wants to be stuck in the recovery room. I remember having surgery, and they said, after you do this, you can go home. 
You, but you got to do this first and you can go home. Right. I woke up and was barely woke. You and I said, God. I woke up saying, Jesus, thank you, thank you, Tamika. Take me to the restroom. I'm ready to go home. The first words out of my mouth was, Jesus, praising the Lord, take me to the restroom so I can go home. Because I was ready to get out of the recovery room. And I'm going to be honest with you. I was ready to get out of there because I didn't want the doctor bill getting no higher. I'm going to be and I'm ready to get home to a place of comfort. Some things you can get stuck in that can cost you a whole lot of money, cost you a whole lot of time, cost you a whole lot of pain, cost you a whole lot of stuff that you shouldn't have to pay out. And so I was ready to get out of there to get to the house. Now I moved a little bit too quick because I got mm -hmm. sick yeah. trying to get they out of there. Too fast. But you got to take God, you got to take it in God's time. But it's things that we got to do. Come on, Sister Mickey. Let's so, get into this So this word. morning, um, well, Pastor preached on yesterday, didn't he? He, uh, he preached a word, you know, God wants to take, the invitation has been given to us to go higher. Yes. And that message was a, um, it's life changing mm -hmm. because God is saying, Hey, here's an invitation. I want you to go higher. Right. You're down in the valley. I want you, I want you to be able to see from where I see. Well, not exactly from where he see, but on top, he wants you to be able to see on top and look down. That way you can guide, you can, you, you, you know what, you know exactly which way to go. And so this message, I was thinking about how our message on today, um, is, was, Kind of, uh, right in line with what he's saying. We have our title is fear of being stuck between um, tragedy and triumph. Say it again to me. The fear, fear of being stuck between, stuck between. I like those quotation marks. Stuck between um, tragedy and, tri and triumph. Where are you this morning? Are you stuck between? We're, we're stuck between tragedy and triumph. Pain and victory. Mm -hmm. We're stuck in between that. And so I feel like this is a, uh, that was an awesome, awesome message on yesterday. And it kind of led us right into it. You know, you're down in the valley or, uh, and, and God is allowing you to, he's giving you the invitation to come up. You know, don't just, don't get stuck with coming up, you know, and don't get stuck with staying down and don't get stuck with, um, staying mm -hmm. down. And, 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 and once again, our main scripture, and I want y'all to work this every Monday morning when you wake up. Right. I want you to work. You already for God know. has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, power and of love and, and of a, a sound, sound mind. mind. I'm going to say it again. Hashtag, I got a sound mind. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and, and a, a sound, sound mind. mind. You got to tell yourself, I have a sound mind, especially during this time we're living in, especially during everything that's going on. I have a sound mind because that's where the battle is fought in the mind. Things going to come after our mind to steal our peace, right. to steal our joy, to steal our sanity. Ultimately, mm -hmm. he wants to steal your sanity. He wants you to get stuck. And if you're stuck, then you cannot move forward. And I'm, I, I, I got I to gotta be real with you. It's some stuff that I have that, that God has for me. It's some plans that God has for me. It's some things God has already given me that I have not received yet because I've been stuck. And the thing you got to realize more than anything, if God has it for me, I want it. You want it. You want it more than God wants you to have it. Let me say that you want it. You want it so bad. And you got to encourage yourself right through here and tell yourself, I have a sound mind. I have a sound mind. Come on, sister. We're talking about being stuck between tragedy and, and triumph. triumph. Yeah. And, 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 and our, and our key, key verse comes from Isaiah 41 and 10. And I'm got to, in a new, new King James Version. I don't know what version to me got. And it says, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uh, uphold thee with, with my, my right righteous, hand, my my okay. right hand and my righteousness. Come on, okay. Tamika, you go ahead. I love it. Um, I have it in the Living Bible. It says, "Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand." But I like. I think it's the King James version that say, "I will uphold you with my righteous right hand." I love that. That's been a scripture that I have been working for years and years and years. Uh, that so that's my that's my favorite scripture. Anyway, and, 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 and that's the thing, you know. So right here, and I just let, let let's paint a picture. We come into this year, and 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 boom, the pandemic hits. 
and, and the pandemic has been tragic for a lot of folk. It really has. It has been tragic for a lot of folk. Um, people have lost their jobs. People have lost loved ones. Kids can't, haven't been able to go to school. Everything in us has changed. Everything in us, uh, uh, the way we do business, how, how we approach our, uh, every day has changed. The mm -hmm. pandemic has changed us in a lot of ways. You know what I'm right. saying? And, and if you're not careful, you'll find yourself getting stuck there. You know, not that you, you already had a whole lot of other stuff you were dealing with, and now you got to deal with this pandemic. Right. You know, you then, then you had the George Floyd situation. You know, another tragic event, the, uh, 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 what's her name, Brianna, whatever her name was. Taylor. Taylor. That was a tragic event. But it, and some folks lost loved ones through death, through, couldn't go to the hospital. These tragic events coming to life now, what's so powerful here is that, uh, what's so uh, ironic, I should say, is that a lot of us already were dealing with tragic events. Right. We was already dealing with stuff that we never got over. We never dealt with it. We, 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 we experienced it, but we never dealt with it. Let me put it like, we experienced some tragic events in our lives, but we never dealt with it. Some of us lost mothers and fathers in, in, in 2019, 2018, 2017, and in, in the 2000s, and we still really never have dealt with that loss. Some of us have lost jobs. We're already dealing with unemployment. We had our kids, some of our kids that went astray. Some of us have lost some kids. Some of us have went through some divorces. I'm going to say it again. Some of us went through some divorces. Some of us was molested. Some of us was dropped as a kid. Some of us was abandoned. So we already had tragic events in our lives that we were dealing with. And then you come into the year of 2020, mm -hmm. seeing ministry through uh, 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 the spiritual lenses, seeing it through with God, and then you face with a pandemic, another tragic event. Not just to affect you, but affect the whole world. Right. And so you're dealing with this on top of everything else you deal with. And, 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 and tragedy, tragedy is something that most of us have experienced in some form or fashion in our life. Okay, so a tragedy is an event causing great suffering, destruction, and distress, such as a serious accident, crime, or a natural catastrophe. Um... Whenever it comes, whenever tragedy comes, tragedy is a normal part of the human experience. Like James said, we all go through it. And I hate to say that it's normal, but it, it, it's something that's going to happen periodically in life. Uh, in sin, life. Because of sin. Because what Adam did, there's going to be tragic events. The world has been, been in an uproar based off of what Adam did in the garden. And so we're going to have to... They that live godly shall suffer persecution. Man born and woman is a few days full of trouble. Right. There's things that's going to happen in our lives that exactly. we, can't, we can't avoid. Come on, sister. Sometimes it hurts deeply. It hurts. Uh, it's heart-wrenching. It makes you sick to your stomach. It's earth-shattering. It's the kind of distress that makes it hard to swallow and uh, uh, difficult to breathe whenever that things happen. It's like... It's hard, you, you know, you take that breath and it, it is almost hard for you to let that breath out. It's the kind of loss that makes you question everything you thought right. you were sure of. Um, when tragedy comes, it forever alters the way you look at things. Mm. Whether it's death of a loved one, the loss of a relationship, or an unexpected crisis like this coronavirus or, or whatever it is. Um, no one is immune to tragedy. We're not immune to it. No matter how often it happens, we just cannot be immune to this tragedy, to the pain and the loss and rejection. Uh, it's in, but it's inescapable. It's a part of our human experience. I was thinking about. Um, I guess I'm, I've been kind of avoiding this lesson because I really didn't want to talk about it. But I was thinking about the loss of my brother. My brother's loss was very, very tragic. Um, I can remember coming home. And the we had a phone on the wall. You remember it? We had a, a what? What you call that? Rotary phone. A rotary phone. And I answered the phone, and and I can remember hearing my mother's voice and the screams that was coming from the. I'm sorry, y'all. The screams that was coming from the other end of the phone, and it was. I, I really couldn't um, talk. So James is like, what's wrong? And I I, I couldn't even speak about it. You know, it was, it was one of those where that breath that you couldn't get back out, it was, 
it was, I mean, when I say it was tragic, it was very, very tragic. So I was like, we got to go. And so he was like, what's wrong? So I, 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 I vaguely remember, but I think he may have um, gotten on the phone. I don't know. But I told him, you know, what had happened. My brother had been shot um, over 16 times by the police. And I don't, it was, it was bad. I don't, I mean, I can't even really explain it, but um, the event was heart wrenching. It even made the news. It made the, 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 the newspaper. It was a tragic event. And when I arrived at the scene, I saw SWAT. I saw the, the uh, Little Rock police SWAT. I saw um, a crowd of people screaming and yelling and crying and it was just so heart-wrenching that this thing altered my whole family and i mean life haven't been the same since been the same this been you talking to some over 20 years ago uh, i think we had just got married hadn't even been married uh we hadn't even been married uh, like two three months and um it was it was it was very very tragic and, tragic and and, and and the thing about it is it has altered so much um and and, and 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 you can get stuck in that in that place, right. you know. And I know some people in my family, and it just leads me to this where some people in my family have been stuck in between that tragedy and triumph and have coming out of this. Right. Sorry it took me so long to tell the story, but it no, still no, it good, still right. hurts. You're good. You're good. I mean because I think that I think that's the thing you gotta we gotta realize you're not the only one that had to deal with something tragic what's tragic to you is tragic to you right and 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 it affects everybody you know uh um that loss of a loved one a mother that father that brother you know and the thing about it with 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 with, with us is is especially with tamika family we did have one tragic loss after another tragic loss i'm talking about young folk folk that's in that in their 20s our sister was was uh, uh lost her life and then a uh, 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 another brother was 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 shot and killed, and a, a, a niece was lost. So when you see all these things, and the devil does, and a, he 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 brings these things about to get us stuck. The pain sometimes is unbearable. I know folk that have lost um, brothers and sisters and family members, and they still stuck there. They still stuck. God doesn't want us to be stuck. Sometimes we ask ourselves, Lord, why? Right. Why? Why did you allow me to be raped? Why did you allow them to get over on me? Why did you allow the divorce to happen in my life? Why did you allow this person to die the way they died? Why? And, and, and the thing about it is, even though that has happened, that tragic event is over, but I'm still dealing with the effects of that event. Right. And that's what I want you to, 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 us to realize, even though the event is over with, folks saying, well, that happened 20 years ago. I don't care if it happened 100 years ago. It has been implanted. It has been, it has been, it's, it's been put, placed, placed in a certain part of our life that we have to sometimes deal with it. And sometimes we, the pain seems so great that we don't want to deal with it. Right. We don't want to deal with it. But, but, but it affects so much. Mm -hmm. It affects so much. And when I look at what it has affected, not just in, 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 in our marriage and relationship, I see what is it affected in, in, in her family and other family members. So what I'm saying is tragic event. All of us have had some type of, most of us have had some right. type of tragic event in our lives that, 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 that we're still dealing with the effects of. Come mm -hmm. on, sister. Me. And, and, and I'm going to say this. It's, it's, Tragic in its literal work deals with one thing or two things, suffering and destruction. I'm going to say it again. Tragedy in its literal work deals with suffering and destruction. It's coming to make you feel like you're going through some stuff mm -hmm. that you can't get out or it's coming to destroy you. But we got to realize God allowed it. And he said, I will place no more on you than you can bear. So with that being said, that you got to realize if he allowed it, I don't understand why, but I lean not into my own understanding and I acknowledge him in my ways and I trust him through this. Come on, sister. And, I, and what he said, it, it comes for destruction, but he said he trusts God and he leaned not into his own understanding, but he's um, trusting in God to give him that understanding of why. 
So why can leave you, let, let me go back. Let me kind of bag up just a little bit. Tragedy produces fear. Yes, yes, yes. Tragedy, in that tragedy that happened in my family, um, it produced a lot of fears. Fears of guns, fears of the police, fears of... Um, we still have a fear. I'm going to say we have a fear here. When the phone rings late at night. Right, I jump every, up. Everybody the hearts go to racing because... Right, exactly. I mean, um, the phone can't ring at a certain time. My mom called me the other night. It was what? Um, probably... One o'clock, she, she got her time, her days and nights mixed up for some reason. But anyway, she, she called one o'clock in the morning and I jump. I'm like, hello, you know, what, what, what's going on? Did James have somebody come cut my yard? And you ready to stop? And you I'm ready like, to throw what? the phone because you just said, yes, wait a minute now, you don't call at one o'clock in the morning. I'm about talking about somebody cutting grass. <laughs> what? And, and so, you know, and but because it, it, weird. It, you let me say this when stuff like this happened, you can taste. Right. You can taste the pain. I'm, 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 mm -hmm. I'm, I want to make it real. You can taste the pain because we get in the church and folks say you should be over this. God didn't already heal you. God didn't already live. I am human. It's certain things that have triggered, tragic events right. have triggered in my life that I still can taste the pain. I still get in a state of depression. I still get in a low. I still, I still get in a place where I had to fight my way out of it because of the pain was so great. The divorce was, 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 was so painful. Cause I thought I was doing everything right, mm -hmm. and 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 then come to find out that that they had a whole different. I don't want to get too much in there, but they had something else they were doing, and, and the pain of being abandoned as a, a as a young lady, as a young man, mm -hmm. hurts so great that we we can taste it. It shapes us. It right. molds us. It causes us to 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 be a tragic events have suffering and destruction connected to them i want you to get that it has suffering and destruction connected to it but we serve a high priest that can be touched with the feelings of our family he already knows what we're going through he already knows how to get us out of it mm -hmm. we just got to trust him come on sister Mika. i was thinking um, when he was saying that okay what kind of destruction okay tragedy is a disaster that brings about death injury mm -hmm. and hardship living in living in this life is certain that we will experience it one um any, any kind of, any form of these uh, types of tragedies, we cannot escape it, as we said before. If someone you know um, or yourself was injured in a, in a car wreck, right. it might cause you to be have a fear of riding in a car. Right. If you know someone who was killed by a gun, um, it might produce a, a fear of guns. If you know someone who was raped by uh, rape, it may produce a place of, a fear of a place mm -hmm. or even a gender. Right. Which causes that person to to change and alter their mindset to do things that they they wouldn't have done naturally. Um, this coronavirus mm -hmm. uh, is producing uh, OCD, um, obsessive, <laughs> obsessive compulsive yes, disorders is. in yes, people. Yes, you is. know, they're, they're afraid to touch things. Mm -hmm. They're afraid to um, get close to people. And we were running the other morning. You speak to people, they're scared to talk to you because they don't want to get too close, um, get too close to you. Right. So um, tragedy produces fear. Right, right, right. Produces fear. You got to realize it produces fear. And and, and it, it's a song say tragedy's a commonplace. Right. It's a commonplace. And, and I want to deal with that because most of us have experienced tragedy and we know how to exist where we are. I'm going to say it again. We know how to exist where we are. We know how to handle it. We know how to, 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 to survive where we are. I've been dealing with this. I had to deal with this for 20 years. I'm still mm -hmm. dealing with it. But that ain't what God planned for us. Right. We, we know how to survive. We, look what it say. Misery uh, Life company. loves company. Misery loves, loves, com company. loves company. So it's certain things that we have been through that we know how to operate in. I know how to operate in this. I know how to. But you stuck. Right. You still stuck. With the events of that tragedy, the, the event is gone, it's over, it happened years ago, but I'm still stuck in between In between this, this event and what God has for me. I'm still mm. stuck. And let me say, we are, we are good at existing with just enough from paycheck to paycheck. I'm, I'm good at existing with taking this pill, that pill. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm good at... You fussing, I'm fussing, the kids fussing, I'm staying in this room, you staying in that room, we live in separate lives, but we supposed to be married. 
The devil is a lie. Right. I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm, I ain't going to talk to my mom. I ain't going to talk to my daddy because I'm still mm. dealing with that same thing. I can operate here. I can operate here. I'm, I, I'm good. I can operate. You know, that's what they, they, they say. I'm good. I'm good. I'm all right. I can operate here. I'm good but the devil that. is a lie because God did not put Same. you in a situation where you can just exist. If you just existing, right. you are stuck. I'm going to say it again. If you are just existing, you are stuck. You, you Yeah, yeah. You ain't dying, but you ain't living. Mm, I'm going to say it again. Good. You ain't dying, but you ain't living. You're stuck in between. You're stuck in between. Uh, 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 and, and like I say, we good. I, I don't want to make it personal, but but we down here in the South. Let me put it like that. We good at dealing with tragedy. We we good at dealing with it. You know, I can operate in it. I can handle it. I'm good. You know, I'm I'm paycheck to paycheck. Unemployment this week. I'm good with this government assistance. I'm good at being by myself. And deep down inside, you ain't happy because mm -mm. you know you're not living. Right. You know this ain't the, this ain't where you. Were. But we have learned. And let me say this: we're comfortable with it. We have found ourselves getting comfortable with mediocrity. Mm. Did I say the word right? Yeah, you said. I got that right. We're right, y'all. Go, look James. At, we have we have come comfortable with mediocrity. I just messed it up, but we good with it. We 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 got comfortable. We're just living with just enough. The devil is a lie. I will refuse to be stuck right. right here in this. Yes, the event happened. Yes, but God came that I might have life. And and have it more abundantly. more abundantly. And so I'm stuck between, I'm not in the bin anymore, but I'm still stuck between the two. You know what that place is, that in-between place? It's a desolate place. Mm. Come on, sister. That place that is, desolate is a, a, a place that's deserted of people. Oh, that's It's good. in a state of bleakness. It's emptiness. It's a, it's, it's a dismal uh it's in a dismay it's grim it's deserted it's a wasteland it's bare um it's it's a place of confusion mm. it's mm. like okay so after war yeah the grounds become desolate yeah. can i talk on that for a little bit yes you can, can because I, I i asked you I, the I been, other day i've been in a war you know and that's i i, I, I fought in in the, in the iraq war and let me tell you something after a war, I want y'all to get this picture. After a war, even though the battle is won, when you look back over that, when you look back over where the battle was fought, it is it 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 is it's in it's it's tore up. Mm. It's desolate. It's destruction all around. But the battle has been won and fought, but everything is tore up after 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 a tornado comes through. Mm. The tornado has moved, that track event is gone, but when you look around. What is it? You see destruction. Right. And sometimes we can focus so much on the destruction that we that we forget that we still got life. I'm gonna say it again. Oh, that's good. You can focus so much on the destruction. This has been tore up, that's been tore up, that's been destroyed. I lost this, I lost this, but you still have life. And the thing is you came through it. Came through it. Come on, to me. I was just, come on. You see. came through it. So when you're dealing with with with, with wars and, and battles. When you finish fighting that thing, it is told. When I say it's 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 smoking, it's stank, it might be stuff that's around it is dead. It don't look like there's any use anymore. But the battle is over, and you have won. But everything has been destroyed. Destroyed. You, and let me tell you something. When you find yourself in this desolated place, uh, when you come through a tragic event, it can leave you depleted, mm -hmm. devastated and tired mm. i'm gonna say when you come through a a tragic event it can leave you depleted des devastated and tired and let me tell you something when you didn't when you didn't ask for it but you still had to deal with it right when you didn't petition it but you still had to deal mm -hmm. with it it will leave you devastated and Tired. Come on, sister. Keep, keep going. I like that. And, and, and when you look at this, we're talking about uh, desolate, mm -hmm. desolate, desolate. When stuff is desolate, what is? Are you in a place of desolate right now? Are you in a place where you're mm. lonely? I got, I got some on that right there. Uh, a place of where you're lonely. A place where you feel abandoned. A place where they feel like there's no hope. 
a place where you feel forsaken, a place where you feel empty, a place where it seems vacant, a place of solitary, a place of seclusion, a place of, 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 of barrenness. Oh, this is good, right? Barrenness. Because when, when, when something is desolate, it's barren. It doesn't have the ability to reproduce. You, you understand what I'm saying? There's, there's no more life going to come out of it. So hold up. So hold up. After war, uh -huh. that place become a desolate place. Mm -hmm. Is it possible later that life can come out of it? Oh, yes. Because the place is desolate, but you ain't. Okay. Let me say that again. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it in that, in that good English. The place might be desolate. That place in you might be desolate. But God told Adam and Eve to do what? Replenish the earth. Be productive and reproduce. God has placed some stuff in you that, that I don't care if the, the vent might left you desolate in an area. That place might be desolate, but you still have life. You still have the power to reproduce. That's good. You still have the power to give forth life. Mm -hmm. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. What are you saying? What are you What are you saying to yourself? Are you saying I'm never gonna get out of it? Are you saying there's no hope? Are you saying it's gonna where it's always gonna be? Look here, the Bible says I shall flourish. What in my latter in years. my latter years? He says I know the plans I have for you. It wasn't to keep you in a desolate place. Yeah, it might look desolate. But the battle is over. You have won because you're still here by God's grace and right. mercy. Come on, sit to me. I was thinking about when you were saying, "Am I in this? Am, am I ever going to come out of this?" So we're we're talking about being stuck mm -hmm. in between. Stuck means to be uh, trapped between something. There's something on each side. Um, there to be trapped in something. You're jammed. You're fixed. You're trapped. Right. You're immovable. You're detained. But. I, I, I'm, this thought is just now coming to my mind. Come on, speak. When you say tragedy, triumph, to me, there's movement in between there. Right. So you're not stuck. You're not jammed. You're not fixed in a position. You're not trapped there. You're not immovable in that place. Mm -hmm. You're not detained in there. There's movement in between tragedy and triumph. Right, right. You can move in that. So it, the choice is really up to you if you want to be jammed and fixed and trapped in that place in between. Got a question, though. Uh -oh. I got a question. And the question is, how do I get from tragedy to triumph? Because a lot of folk have experienced tragedy. Right. But I'm, stu I'm still in, the, in, in that, in that, in that, in that, what they, uh, the, uh, they traveled in the wilderness for how many? Uh, it was a four-day journey. How many days journey? Forty. Uh, uh, and it took them forty years. So between tragedy and triumph is really a short distance, mm. but it's left up to your mindset how long it's gonna take you to get to mm. the triumph. I'm gonna say it again. It's really a short distance between tragedy and triumph. That's good. But the thing of it is, is how long it takes is left up to me, left up to my mindset. Right. And, and I'm going to say this, because I'm so familiar with tragedy that I know how to live. They were so familiar with being slaves that they would rather stay slaves than walk in, the, in, in, in freedom. I'm going to say it again. You're so familiar with that pain. You're so familiar with that, that, that struggle. You're so familiar with them sufferings. You're so familiar with living from paycheck to paycheck that you are afraid. There's a fear of, of, of moving forward to victory. That's good. I was thinking about the movie that we was watching. Um, um, what's the movie? Um, uh, the other day we was watching about the the one who was... Oh, I was talking about Harriet. Harriet, mm. my bad. Anyway, we was watching Harriet, and Harriet went back for her Moses. sister. She said, this, this Moses, same thing. Little Moses, Black Moses. Come on. She went back for her sister, and her sister was stuck. She had a way. She had a uh, opportunity to be delivered, to be saved from um, her master. She decided to stay because of fear. Because of fear. Because of fear. Fear of the journey. Mm. Fear of the journey. When, when others have already made the journey, you still stuck because you're afraid to take a step. And what happened to her? She ended up dying. Her kids were taken. So 
your fear um, plays a part in everybody that's under you. Right, right, right. Your decision, your decision making to be free plays a part in your kids and being free. Mm -hmm. Because what happened in there, she, her kids were taken from her when her sister went back to get her. When Harriet went back to get Rachel, Rachel's kids were taken, right. had been taken, both of them, and Rachel had died, had been killed by her master. And let, let me, let me, let me, let me, can I, can I go, go ahead? Ahead. You being stuck affects everybody that's connected to you. Mm. I'm going to say it again. You being stuck affects every, affects your children. It affects your spouse. It affects, you know, your loved one. Mm -hmm. It affects your business partners. It affects every area of your life because you are stuck. And the thing we have to ask ourselves, how do I get out of it? Because I think that's a question a lot of us have. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. Mm -mm. Let me go to, let me go to first Kings. Wait, wait, let's on, go back on, to your on. question. Okay. Though. Okay. You asked a question. You said, how do I come out of it? Yeah. How well, the only thing that can come to my mind is, and, and and I know it sounds so redundant. I know, I know, guys, but you gotta have some kind of faith. You gotta have faith. You got to believe in you God. You got to believe that God will bring you out. You have to trust that God will will bring you out of this, even though you don't see a way. You've got to have faith that God is gonna Keep on. bring you out of this situation. Now, what is, what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for with the evidence of things that's not seen. You can't see it, mm -hmm. but you got to believe it. You got to believe it. You got to believe it. You got to have hope in it. Against hope, you still got to have hope. When it looks bleak, when it looks dismayed, when it looks dis devastated, when it looks like there's no way out of it, when it looks like this is the way it's going to be for my life, you got to have enough faith to overcome your fears because, and, and it says faith coming by what? Yeah. Hearing, hearing God's word, not the worldly word, not the worldly word. And that's why I was going, when I was going to first King chapter 18, mm -hmm. it's it, it, uh, verse, uh, you got it right there, verse 21, but I want to go to verse 20. It says, so Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and gathered them, gathered the prophets together at Mount Carmel. And Elijah came to all the people and said, how long mm -mm. will you halt between two opinions? If the if the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people answer not a word. And this is where we are. The people did not answer a word. How long will you be halt between two opinions? What God is saying and what the devil is saying. Because both of them talking. I'm going to say it again. How long will you be halt between two? How long will you be stuck between what the devil is saying and what God is saying. Wow. Because I know if God be for me, he's more than anything against me. So whose report will you believe? Because you got two reports sitting in front of you. One report you have experienced. One report you haven't experienced. You in between. One report you experienced. I experienced tragedy. I experienced death. I experienced poverty. I experienced uh, uh, a div divorce. I have experienced uh, of, of low self-esteem. I have experienced... Uh, 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 depression i experienced hurts i experienced the rape but i've never experienced i experienced all the stuff the devil has done to me but i have never experienced god's triumphant Ooh, victory yeah that's good so like how that. do i move from what i know to what i don't know how do i move from the pain of my past the pain and the hurts of my past that I'm familiar with and every time I try to take two or three steps forward a familiar spirit comes and does what trigger, trigger something time. in my past to try to bring keep me stuck the devil is a lie that's good faith coming by hearing the hearing comes by the word I gotta start activating my faith in the midst of my fears I heard pastor and first lady talking about this last week I gotta move with fear but operate in faith come on sister to me I was thinking um how long? How long are you going to be stuck? That's How good. long are you going to keep listening to what the keep devil going. is saying and not what God is saying? Right. God has already given you everything you need for, for life and godliness. He's already given it to you. The thing we got to do is we got to know him so we know how to use what he gave me. That's good. I got to know him. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strong hopes and the casting down of imagination mm -hmm. is some stuff that the devil is doing to try to 
combat the word that's in me. The war is real. The event was real. Mm -hmm. And I said it again, but God is realer. I'm going to keep saying it till you get it. God is realer than anything you have been through. And if you've been through it and you're still out of it, clothe it in your right mind. Come on, Sister Mika. I don't. I, I was trying to figure out where to go from there because I was thinking how a desolate place. I kind of. I was looking up desolate places or, or war grounds after after the war. Talk to us fought. now, y'all. Talk to y'all know. Y'all know what it feels like. Somebody needs your response today to break free from what they in. I'm gonna say that again. Somebody needs your response. Needs your your your. Your amen, your to break free from what they're in. Because the thing about it, they don't want to be there. They don't want to be there. The pain is too great. I'm tired of reliving it. I'm tired of being stuck with it. Yeah, I want to move with it. Because if I can move with that pain, if I can operate with that pain right. of my past, then I'm powerful. And one thing he said, I did not give you the spirit of fear, but I gave you that of love, power, and a sound mind. Sound. Tragic events in our life, desolate places make us feel not loved. It make us feel a lot of things. It make us feel like we're, we're by ourselves. It make us feel like we're in a bleak place, an empty place. But what I'm saying, what, where I was going is, I was thinking about that movement that's in between okay. tragedy and triumph. Okay. And you're saying, how can we get there? You're not fixed. Okay, come You're on. not immovable. Mm -hmm. You have to make a decision. You might have to make that choice. You said, "How long will you hop between two choices? Mm -hmm. How long will you will you make uh, will you keep keeping um, keep thinking keeping yourself in that right. in between right. stage? In between is what between means to um, be in the middle, in the middle. In a, of two objects. There's something on both sides. Same thing as being stuck. Mm -hmm. You're jammed. Right when you're when you're jammed, you're stuck. You're you're immovable, but when you're in between, and the, what was our our, our our title was stuck between. Yeah, the fear of being stuck. Between. The fear of being stuck between. Mm -hmm. See, when you're stuck, you're fixed in have, the middle of. Have Have you ever gotten a place? You know what I'm saying. You mess around, got in a place, and you got stuck. And you got the fear immediately kicked in. You got in that place and you you need to remember how that feels. You got in a place, whether whether it was you was crawling under the bed, trying to find something and something fell on top of you and you got stuck. I, you, it it might have been a long time ago, but all of us been there where we got in a situation, got in a room, right. the door got locked behind us and we were stuck and, 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 and you got stuck in that place. Do you remember what that feels like? The same feeling sometimes come with different different events in our life. I got I'm stuck there. I don't I don't like the way but this feels. But it's a choice for you to make to to get up out of there. Mm -hmm. Now you you might have to you might have to fix um uh, jam your way out. Not jam your way out, but 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 uh what's the word when you're trying to make yourself when you're trying to push your way out? You gotta free yourself. You gotta free yourself. You gotta, you gotta get yourself out of that mm -hmm. out of that position. Mm -hmm. You're not in this case. There's movement. Mm -hmm. There's an opportunity for right. movement. Said opportunity. Pastor said, Pastor said yesterday, cover your mouth, mm -hmm. shut be, up, be quiet, and come on up higher. Come the invitation higher. has been given. Right, right. God saying today, while you're in between, be still and know that I'm God. Right, I'm God. He said, I know that I'm here. No, you're in the middle, in between these two objects, mm -hmm. these two objects, aware of tragedy and triumph. He said, be still. And know that I'm God. God will guide you. Right. He will lead you. Right. You got to trust in him. Trust and lean not on your own understanding, but trust on God, trust in God to know that he will direct you. He's going to show you how to move. He's going to show you. You said, I said, we have to have faith. Right. We got to believe that we're going to move from this position, that we can move. Right. It's one step at a time. One Pick step. your foot up. The way has already been made. It's already been made. The victory is already ours. You know, and, 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 and let me say this. You know where you are is not, if you're stuck, you know you ain't happy. If you're stuck, you know you're not, you, you, you know this ain't what God right. wants you to be. That's what I and, was and, and right. go, go ahead. I was thinking, it says we are constantly speaking to the mind because it is with the mind that we serve God. And if my... And if minds can be, de if our minds are in a desolate, desolate place, 
It's an unwelcoming place. Mm -hmm. It's a, a, a place that's unreceptive. Um, a lot of times we don't want to, when we get in that place, we don't want to receive, uh, we're unreceptive. Right. Unreceptive. We're, um, it's, a, it's a troubling place. Because everything around you is look like destruction. Right. Everything around you is not pleasing. Everything around you. And let me say this. It can be pleasing, but the way you look at it is not pleasing. Right. And and, and, and let me say this. And we're going to get ready to start walking out of here because I want to leave y'all in, in a positive mode. You, you, you've you been in that destined place. You know that's not. And the thing right. about it is it's destroying you. It's, 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 it's that pain of the past is destroying you. It's keeping you from moving forward. And this brings me to 2 Kings chapter 7 uh, uh, and, and 3. And it says there were four lepers. There were four lepers mm -hmm. men oh, that's a good at one. The, the entering of the gate. And they said to one another, why sit we here until we die? I'm going to say it again. It was, there were four of them. They was at the gate. They said, why sit we here until we die? It said, we sit here until, uh, it says, we, if we were enter into the city, then the famine is in the city. Mm -hmm. And we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we shall die also. So the thing about it, I can't stay in this tragic event. What's so powerful here? Let me let me let me take the glass roller because I feel this thing right. What's so powerful here? E e uh, uh, Elijah, Elijah had already spoken and said that he had already prophesied ah. that the famine was gonna be over. Let me tell you something. Trouble don't last always. This pandemic was is getting ready to be over. How long are you gonna stay? Stuck between tra tragedy and triumph. How long are you gonna stay? And I'm talking about this. This is so. So right now, is the tragedy. He was speaking and saying the pandemic, the famine was already going to be over. Mm -hmm. It was finna be over. And they said if we sit here, we gonna die. They didn't know, but they said if we go to the city, we gonna die in the famine of the city. But if we sit here, we know we are gonna die. Look, if you know where you, you know where you are, is not productive. Right. Why are you staying there? Why are you existing right there? He said, I shall flourish in my latter years. My latter years will be greater than my former years. It's some things that God has promised me I have not received. Yeah, I can operate mm -hmm. right here, but that ain't what God want me to do. God is simply saying, I'm calling you to a higher place. The, this pandemic is finna be over. What are you doing to prepare, prepare yourself for the triumph? What are you doing to prepare yourself for the victory? What are you doing to prepare yourself for when it's all over? You got a sound mind. You got some love and you got some power. So what you going to do with it? What you going to do with it? He says, why sit ye here? And why are we going to sit here and die? It was four of them. They had to make a decision. I ain't going to be stuck between two opinions. Okay, there's famine in the city, mm -hmm. but there's death right here. So let me just move forward. I don't know what to expect, but I know what to expect right. where I'm at right now. Right. I know what I'm dealing with right now. So it's some things that we have to make a decision. And and as we get ready to get out of here. I like that. I mean, me. I like, no, I'm saying I like, I, I like that there's a decision that has to be made. Mm -hmm. That's like, we already said that there's movement in between that, um, those, that, that, that decision between tragedy and triumph. Right. There's some room in there. You have to make that decision on today. Am I going to stay here? In your marriage. Come on. Okay. I mean, confession moment. I have to make the decision. Am I going to stay here? You have to make that decision. In your what, singlehood. In your singlehood. Am I going to stay here? Am, am I going to stay? I'm going to go back to college. Am I going right. to stay with this? I, I, am I going to Am I gonna stay right here? Let me, let me, let me come on. Because I, I, I ain't, you know. Am I going to stay with this? This I almost said the wrong word. Mm -hmm. Am I, I going to stay with this man? Am I gonna stay with this woman knowing that this is this is blocking my uh -huh. blocking my victory, blocking my triumph? I gotta make some decisions right through here. Am I gonna continue to do what I'm comfortable with? Or am I gonna make a decision to bring me out of my comfortability so I can go higher? Let me tell you something. It's not easy climbing higher. It's easier for me to stay where I am. But if I'm gonna go higher, I gotta take some weight off of me. I gotta reduce some of this load. I gotta lay aside some sins and some weights so I can go higher. With with God. Mm -hmm. So you got to make some conscious decisions right through here. And you those know, decisions are not going to be easy. They're not going to be easy. They're not going to be easy. But the thing about it, I need to get to triumph. 
I've never experienced triumph like I need to. Mm, I've been that's experienced good. failure after failure after failure, divorce after divorce, pain after pain, uh, abundance after abundance. But the God, but God said, "Whom the Son set free is free." Indeed. I want to experience some freedom in my life. I want to experience some victories in my life. I want to experience some triumph in my life. I don't know what it feels like, but I'm willing to take a chance to step out on faith to achieve what God has already given me. He's already given. And let me tell you this. You have been through some wars. You've been through some battles. You've been through some fights. You've been through some struggles. You've been through some hurts. You've been through some pain. You was trying to do the will of God and got hurt. You was trying to do the will of God and got left. You got abandoned. You got all these different things came. Some of them came while you was trying to do the will of God. You are out fighting a battle for the Lord. And you got hurt. Right. You got Put in a destined place. Destined in the church. But but let this, we say destined in the church. That's powerful right there. Somebody need to preach that. I know we need to preach it. I ain't going to say it on Facebook Live, but I'm going to call them personally. Tell them. I was destined in the church. I was in a place where I felt like I could not reproduce. I was in a place that I felt like I couldn't be productive. In the church. I was in the church in a place where I supposed to be experiencing healing, where I was supposed to be experiencing deliverance, where I was supposed to be experiencing a, a, a good marriage, good children. Good, all this, but I wasn't. But the thing about it is, as we get ready to go out of here, I'm reminded of a story. Uh, at, I think it was in First Samuel, uh, around uh, 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 David, uh, 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 thirty, close to the end, somewhere thirty, thirty-one. I'm, I'm not about, but David was out fighting the battle, and he came 30, back on chapter um, verse eight. He came back from the battle, came back to Ziglag, and he was he was he experienced desolation. He experienced the, 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 the Ziglag was on fire. The women and the children, was, they, they had been, 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 been taken. He experienced some stuff right through here. And it was bad. We have been in a pandemic. Mm. We have lost some stuff in this pandemic. Some of us have, have experienced some stuff in this pandemic. Some of us have not. Some of us experienced destruction. Some of us have, have, have experienced destruction before the pandemic. Had tragedy events and... But David encouraged himself mm -hmm. what? In the Lord. Yeah, he is strengthened Lord. himself in the Lord. I'm telling you today, it's time for us to start strengthening ourselves. You have a sound mind. God has not given you the spirit right. of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Work your love, work your power, work your sound mind. What shall separate us from the love of God? Nothing, nothing. shall separate us from his love. So if nothing separates us from his love, nothing should separate us from his power. Mm-hmm. Nothing. So David said one thing, and I'm gonna let you take this one now, baby. He said, "Shall I pursue?" Shall I? Sh shall I? He inquired of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He didn't inquire of, of, of sister so and so. He didn't inquire of, of, of nobody else. He inquired of who? He inquired of the Lord. Shall I pursue this truth? Shall I pursue the thing that taken that 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 has been stolen from me? Let me read it. Huh? It says First Samuel uh, chapter thirty, verse eight. It says, "And David inquired." At the Lord saying, shall I pursue after this truth? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue, pursue. for thou shalt surely overtake them. And without fail, recover, recover. all. You, pursue your triumph on this You morning. don't even know. You your don't victory. even know what you lost. Gosh, you don't even good. know what God has already given you. But I dare you to pursue it. I dare you to pursue it. Right? The pandemic is finna be over. Soon and very. Trouble don't last always. Hear me what I say. It's finna be over. Activate your faith in the middle of your fears and start going after what God has already promised you. Mm -hmm. He said, I came that you might have life and have it that more abundantly. He says, and all things were more than conquerors through him that love us. Mm -hmm. You got to start speaking. Get you some scriptures. That speak to encouragement of yourself and start encouraging yourself in the Lord. Don't wait, don't wait on nobody else to encourage you. Encourage yourself. This is motivational Monday. Start encouraging yourself. I have the faith of a mustard. I have enough faith to speak to this mountain and say, be thou removed. Yes. You got to start claiming some victories right now. I don't even know what all I'm victorious over because I haven't experienced victory. We as a people have not experienced victory on the level that we should. Right. But who's going to be the first? Are you going to be the first one? Are you going to be the first to start your business? Are you going to be the first in your family to start that business? Are you going to be the first in your family to graduate college? Are you going to be the first in your business to be successful at a level? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be the first in your business to, I mean, in, in your in your uh, family to do what God has called you to do? Right. It's your choice. Don't continue to be stuck. Mm -hmm. 
activate your faith in the midst of your fears and walk out of shall you pursue? That's the question you ask yourself. And then the thing thing about it, you got to ask, David knew what he was going to get. He knew some of the stuff he was going to get. What you going to get? What are you going to get today? You going to get your joy back? The kingdom of heaven suffered violence. Hashtag what you going to get. But the violence take it by force. Yeah, hey, I'm hashtag joy. Hashtag peace. Hashtag my money. Hashtag my prosperity. Hashtag I'm going to get back what the devil has stolen from me. And the thing about it is he stole it. I didn't even know I had it. I didn't even know God had given it to me. But when I realized it, I want it. I, I put need. my hashtag up. Hashtag my peace and my joy. Right. And, and, and that's, that's it. Stuck between tragedy and triumph. Most of us know how to how to operate in, in our tragedy. But we never have experienced triumph on the level that God wants us to experience. Right. You got to tell yourself, I'm going to get some victory. Unto him that always causes us to triumph. triumph. Mm-hmm. I have to. We got the victory. Mm-hmm. Victory. Victory in Jesus. He died that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Mm-hmm. You got to tell yourself today, I refuse to be stuck between two opinions. As for me and my house, we're going after the things of God. I know that's we're going right. After what God has already promised me. And all the promises of God are what? Yay, 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 yay and, and in amen. him, amen. amen. It is so. It's already done. It's yours. Activate your faith in the midst of your fears. You're going to have them. Mm-hmm. But you got to walk in them. Believe to see the goodness of the Lord. Yes, Where? that's good. In the land of in the, the land living. Of the living. We love you. Hope we help somebody. Yes, your tragic event was. Throw them questions. You got some questions to me. Throw them questions as we get out of here. Uh-oh. We, we, we got to get. Right, we got a few people still watching. I want y'all to take these questions and 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 roll with them for a little bit. Uh, uh, and we gonna get out of here. Come on, throw this. It question. says, "Can one person's triumph be another person's tragedy?" Okay. That's one question. Can we suffer from tragedy and triumph at the same time? Mm-hmm. How can one ultimately triumph after tragedy? Mm-hmm. That's the main question. You need how to be can one today. triumph? Come on, get how, how does one? How, can, how does one ultimately triumph after tragedy? After tragedy. That's the main question. Answer those questions. If you don't mind, put them on Facebook. You know, how you can put them on there after this end because we get ready to end. end. We love you. We appreciate you. Keep us in prayer. Keep our, 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 our church family in prayer. Those that we have seen, we got mothers that haven't been able to come to church. Um, when I say mothers, older mothers, that, that reach out and, 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 and say something to them. Call them. They can't text because a lot of them don't got the phone. But just call them and tell them, hey, I miss you. I love you. We love you. We appreciate you. Uh, once again, Motivation Monday. Mm-hmm. Coming to you the way, all the way we know how. And hoping we're blessing somebody. Keep our pastor and first lady in prayer. Uh, keep like I say the, the, as we get ready to look at it, re-entry, keep this country in prayer. Uh, the leaders of this country in prayer also. Once again, we love you. We appreciate you. Love, peace, and happiness. And happiness. Y'all have a blessed and marvelous Monday in Jesus' name. See you later.